leave the floor for Q to yeah. present what is Q and what is exactly that uh, they want to do to show themselves in the market. Martin or thank you for doing. Okay. Um, hey, thanks for having us. Thank you very much, Suhil. Really appreciate it. When I heard uh, about it the first time from from you know, it's like uh, wow, this sounds like a big project. I, I'm not really sure this is gonna happen. So I'm super super impressed. Like coming here in the morning, seeing all of this, and uh, the few discussions we've had is like it's just accelerating. It's it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, thanks for, for being here, um, all of you. I'm really looking forward to uh, talk to all of you. I, I had a couple of discussions today early in the morning already which I really enjoyed. Uh, we have uh, Martin here, we have Garrett here, Dino, so pretty much all, the whole team. Um, and I'm just gonna start talking a little bit about what we do and then I'm gonna bring Martin in maybe and, and Garrett for, for other things so you don't always see my face, um, <laughs> which gets boring at a time. So Q is a decentralized universal governance layer for Web3. So governance, is, um, is a topic and uh, something that we need for everything we do together. And uh, blockchain technology, ha technology has brought about like an amazing concept of governance, which we call code is law. Whatever you can code is self-executing. It's very transparent if you do it right. And it's binary and that's why you don't ever have any disputes. So that's um, blockchain, that's, that's Bitcoin, that's Ethereum, that's smart contracts, that's all that you can code. But when we entered into the space um, around like 2014-ish, 15-ish, we realized pretty quickly, well, not, you can't code everything. And I know that there are a lot of devs here, a lot of coders, a lot of people who know a lot more about technology than I do. But there's one thing I do know, you cannot code the world. It is simply impossible um, because you will never understand and know all future stages of the world. You know, the world will evolve and you will never ever be, be able to predict all future st stages. There's even like a Nobel Prize uh, that's gone out for somebody who's proven mathematically that it's not possible, but it's not possible. So then what happens? As soon as you come to something that you cannot code, you run into trouble, right? If you don't have any rules how to deal with that. And it turns out that a lot, if not most of whatever we uh, think about and do in our relationships and also in business is what we call discretionary decision making. It's not binary, it's not yes or no, the answer. The answer is not if this, then that. But it, the answer is it depends. Yeah, it depends on the situation and we will have to be able to make more situation adequate decisions. Okay, and we're um, providing that piece and adding it to code as law. That's why we go beyond code as law. We love code as law. We love code. Whatever you can code, you should code always. And uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very bullish on like how much more we will be able to code in the future. Um, like we, I started in, in Web 1 in the late 90s, that's a long time ago, you know, and I was totally fascinated with this whole idea of democratizing information, and, um, and then I saw what happened with that um, over, over the last 20 years. And when I realized, um, or when I first came across Bitcoin and blockchain, I was like, this is the missing piece. This is what we've been missing. Um, so I, I, I love that piece of technology. But then I realized, especially like in, in DeFi, we're missing that other piece as well. So what um, is, is Q? We are providing means for decentralized organizations. And decentralized organizations are not just DAOs, like communities, but like MakerDAO is one of the oldest DAOs. It's a DeFi protocol. Everything that is an organization that wants to be truly decentralized needs some kind of uh, infrastructure to do that. Like you've all heard about the um, really awkward, if not horrible regulatory situations in the US, you know, like uh, the Ukidao case or like what the SEC is doing is just ridiculous.
ridiculous. But one of the reasons is, even if you were um, to design an organization that's truly decentralized, today you couldn't. There's no way. There's no way. And we're trying to help with that a little bit. So um, with Q, we're providing infrastructure. You can set up your DAO, your decentralized organization, um, under 11 minutes. Garrett can do it in five. I can't. <laughs> I can. Uh, you can. You will have a constitution that is a set of rules, like code, that is transparent, which is also a set of rules. Governance always needs at least three things. It's the trinity of governance. It's rule setting. What is it that we want to do? How is it that we want to do it? Who can do what? And so forth. And the second thing is execution. In code that's self-executing without any middleman that's the beauty about code <coughs> if you don't have code you still need an execution mechanism and that needs to be decentralized and it needs to be independent and it needs to be outside of whatever the business is that is one of the most important things because like it, even if you have a rule set if you don't have execution the, it's not worth anything you know because you can't you can't make it alive you can't bring it into real um, reality and then because that's the second thing so transparent rules execution and the third thing is dispute resolution because as soon as you have a question that you answer with it depends you more likely than not will get into disputes at some point you know like uh, we just talked about it, um, something earlier you know if you do something like that and you have somebody that pays you for it and then you have a dis different idea of what is a good conference then you have a, a, like a question that's open to interpretation so you need a dispute resolution mechanism so we provide all of these three things you can have your constitution like your set of rules that is expanding what you can do on code so you can cover all of the things that you cannot code in your constitution we have um, a, um, a execution mechanism, which we call root nodes uh, on the system. And we have integrated with the ICC, which is the biggest private arbitration in the world. And um, so whenever there's a dispute in a uh, DAO, you can take it to the ICC and have that resolved. And then we can be able to execute that on chain or off chain, just depending on like, how you choose to do it. The beauty of the last one is, is the following. So imagine you, you have a DAO, you get into a dispute, um, and that happened with the Uki DAO case. And you find somebody to resolute that dispute. Uh, more likely than not, somebody's going to go to court. You know, it's, uh, Some countries, some jurisdiction. In this, the Uki DAO case, it was California. They went to court in California. And then there's a judge. And uh, the guy was probably like close to his 70s, so even older than I am. And he had no freaking idea. What is a DAO even? You know, what is blockchain? What are you talking about? You know, like, I don't see anything. I just see like something going wrong and uh, somebody complaining. He's a California resident. So, yeah. So that's the first question. Like, is, is that judge accepting jurisdiction? Like, do they preside over the case? If you had a constitution as a DAO saying, like, um, this is what we do as a DAO, all of the members agree to that, and if we do have a dispute, we are going to beef it out before the ICC. We're not going to go to court in, like, I don't know, like France or the United States or Germany or whatever. We're going to do this in a private manner. Then, because the ICC is being recognized by pretty much all courts in the world, that court would say like, well, you had a private agreement, you guys decided on what to do, and you decided and agreed upon um, resoluting your bid disputes in a private manner before the ICC. So go do that. Don't see me. Because judges, like many people, they don't want to work. You know, it's like, that's the first, it's literally the first thing they ask. And my background is law, so I was trained in Germany and the United States. I worked for judges. So it's literally the first question they always ask. Do I have to work? Do I have jurisdiction over that? <clears throat> and they're looking for arguments to say, no, I don't. You know? And that's what we're giving them. 
So you opt out of a nation state legal system into private law. That's the third pillar. And that's what we're providing. Um, and uh, one, one of the benefits. There are other benefits that we do. Martin, you want to talk a little about, about like uh, d squared equals v and, and these kind of things? Sure. Yeah? Thank you very much for the <laughs>